Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and in this video today I am going to teach you my strategy for winning basically every Gulag. Uh, since I started implementing this strategy, I have won at least 90% of the Gulags I've been in, and uh, I've broken it down into a easy process for you, and since I'm an engineer and a nerd, uh, I've developed a flowchart to help you walk through this, and it's a step-by-step -step thing that's, that's really straightforward and really simple, and once you start implementing this, I think you're going to see your success in Gulag go way up without needing to be a master on the sticks. Um, so check it out, and uh, let me walk you through this flowchart. So before I break down my three-stage process for Gulag tactics, there's three things that I want you to pay attention to as soon as the Gulag starts. First is you need to know what your primary weapon is, right? Because that's what you're going to use to fight with. Two, I want you to pay attention to what your tactical grenade is. That's going to be important for stage two of my process. And three is you ought to be aware of what your lethal grenade is. You're most likely not going to need this, but if my three-stage process doesn't result in you getting a kill, then it's good to know what grenades you have if you need to uh, improvise at the end of the fight. Now moving on to stage one of this process, as soon as the countdown is over, I want you to sprint as fast as you can to center cover. You'll see in my clips that I'm posting here that that the first thing that I do before I pay attention to anything about the enemy is I sprint to center cover. Now what this is going to do is give you an opportunity to listen for the enemy footsteps from a location that's closer to where they are, as well as putting you in a position where they're not going to expect. Most people in the Gulag aren't going to expect you to rush forward significantly, they'll probably be looking you further to the back, looking for you further back in the map. So this is, I think, the, the key of why this has been such a successful strategy for me. When you're in center cover, I want you to be listening for footsteps. And, you know, you can do this in general, uh, you know, just using your TV, but hopefully you have a good pair of headphones. You're going to be a lot more effective in Modern Warfare in general if you've got a good pair of headphones to listen for footsteps. But if you hear the enemy's footsteps, you should be able to tell if they're coming to the left or the right side, and that should give you the drop on them. So, in 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 a lot of your fights, you'll find that stage one is going to be uh, good enough to 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 finish the fight, and that would be ideal. But we can move on to stage two and stage three if this isn't how it works out. You're up, soldier. Now go sort this fucker out. Okay, so stage two comes if the enemy doesn't come to you during stage one. If you've sprinted to middle cover and you don't hear footsteps and the enemy hasn't come to you, we're going to move on to stage two, which is using your tactical grenade to try and find the enemy location. I like to bounce it off the wall. I think that's the best way to do this while staying in center cover. And I typically do it to the right side just because that's just kind of where it feels right to me. But if you have a stun grenade or a flash grenade, I recommend you bounce your tactical grenade off of the wall and try and hit the enemy to that side. Obviously this isn't going to work if you have a smoke grenade, so if you pull a smoke grenade and uh, if you've got a frag grenade as a lethal, you can bounce the frag grenade off, that, that's an option, um, but it can be a little bit trickier obviously if you have a smoke grenade. So, But we have, we have stage 3 in case you don't have a smoke grenade or if you don't get a hit marker. But if you do get a hit marker from your tactical grenade, then you actually have a good idea of where the enemy is. If you've bounced the grenade off the right side wall, then you're relatively sure that the enemy is on the back right side of the map. And this gives you an opportunity to then push your advantage. The advantage being that you have information about where they are, and now they're a little bit off kilter because they've just been hit with a tactical grenade. Um, you can move either way, but my main suggestion would be to move to strafe opposite the direction of where you got the hit marker. So if you throw the grenade to the right side and get a hit marker, I recommend you strafe left and watch the angles of where you're going to be uh, trying to find the enemy. So either they will be on the far right at the back, maybe trying to push up, or more likely if they're scared and trying to take cover, you might be watching the middle gap uh, for the back because they may be trying to take cover there. So strafe out to that side, watch those angles, and because you kind of put them off kilter with your tactical grenade, I would recommend you push forward and push your advantage and try to end the fight quickly in stage two. Soldier, win here and you return to the front line. Okay, and for stage three. So, you've sprinted to center, you don't hear footsteps, you threw your tactical grenade, you didn't get a hit marker, or you have a smoke grenade, and you can't get a hit marker. Stage three. Stage three is basically a variation of stage two, but you don't know where the enemy is. I want you to start strafing and holding angles. You're still at the middle, which puts you in a relatively unexpected position. 
pick a direction, I tend to be more comfortable moving to the left for whatever reason. So strafe to one direction and watch the angles of the map for where you expect to find the enemy. And make sure you keep your crosshairs, you know, like slicing the pie, like when you're rounding a corner. Keep your crosshairs where you expect to find the enemy. So as you're strafing, you can hopefully engage that enemy as soon as you see them. Hopefully, by virtue of you being in middle cover, wherever you appear, if they do see you, um, they're not going to expect you there and it's going to delay their reaction time to fighting you. So, so at this point, I also want you to kind of stay close to the map. Since you didn't get a hit mark, you don't necessarily know where they are, it's probably not a good idea to push forward. What I tend to do is hold this angle and wait to see what they're going to do. Now, in some instances, you'll get through stage three, you still won't find the enemy, and you might be waiting for them to come forward, and the flag appears. So the way that the flag works, for those of you who don't know, is whoever stands on the flag for a very brief time, a few seconds, um, wins the match. So at this point, you have a couple of options. One is you can hold your position, because you're already at mid-map if you're in stage three, um, and you should actually have a good view of the flag, and you can wait for the enemy to come to you, because they either have to come to the flag to win, or they have to find you and kill you. If you choose to try and capture the flag, if it feels like they're, I don't know, AFK or they're not pushing or they're playing too conservative, then you're kind of going back to the early stage where you're going to go and get on the flag and then wait and listen for footsteps. And once you're on the flag, if they start moving towards you, hopefully you'll hear them coming. But at this point, you're not going to be behind cover. They're going to know where you are and you'll be at a bit of a disadvantage. So if you feel like it is a good strategy for you to get to the flag to end the fight, then go ahead and do that. Um, otherwise, keep holding that angle and wait for them to push to the flag so that you can get the easy kill on them. Okay, so the last part of Gulag Tactics, you've gone through stage three, Maybe things haven't gone the way you expect and something expected happens, unexpected happens. This is where you have to improvise. I can't necessarily help you with this. Maybe early on in the match you got hit with a tactical grenade before you were able to hit them with a tactical grenade. Maybe they sprinted past you and you didn't kill them and so now you have to re-engage. At this point, the best general tactic is going to be to try and move towards where you think they are while still holding angles. Um, if, you know, if you're not super comfortable on the sticks and you're not the kind of person who likes to sprint and jump around corners to try and get the drop on people, um, you know, I'm, I know I'm definitely not that way, then continuing to play tactically I think is still the best option. If you just completely lose track of where they are and the flag appears, use your best judgment. In my experience, um, this is where uh, I would get a gulag loss, right? If, if I, my three-stage process hasn't resulted in a win, um, then, then this is where it's just kind of like a 1v1 and, and you're just kind of gun on gun trying to see who's going to win. Also in my experience though, you know, most of the time you will not have to get past stage 3 of the process. This, this works really well. I, I just kind of stumbled onto it one day in the gulag. I decided I wanted to sprint to the middle really quickly and just see what happened and then I heard footsteps and I kind of naturally developed this through experience. So. Uh, I wanted to share it with you guys. I think you'll find that it's just as effective as I do because I don't feel like I'm winning the gulag because I have massive gun skill. I see a lot of the, you know, pro players, the people who play video games for a living, essentially. They basically just strafe at the beginning looking for angles and they just are going to outshoot the enemy, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strafe out into the wide open line to where you are and I'm just going to outshoot you. I'm guessing if you're watching this video, that's probably not going to be you. And if you follow this really simple strategy, I think it's going to increase your success in the gulag as much as it did for me, which is just going to be absolutely massive. All right, we just coming around your right side, right, right, right. motherfucker. What is wrong with that guy? <laughs> what, is, what is wrong with him? He wasn't even looking around. What happened? I heard shots! Well, minions, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope it's going to give you some good tips for how to win your own gulag fights. Um, if you're not a minion, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe now. Um, 
it's just a really good way to keep track of, of these helpful tips that I give you. Uh, a big part of what I'm trying to do on this channel is help teach you guys how to be better when maybe you don't have 400 hours to put into a game. So uh, stick around. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it so I can know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.